Welcome back. Now, as we promised you, as we always do, in the last segment of the show, we've got a special interview lined up with football royalty. I think it's safe to say here in South Africa, uh, a man who played in Germany, Sweden, Belgium, and played here locally, was also part of the 2010 World Cup squad that represented uh, South Africa. That, of course, is Lance Davis. Lance, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on Cape Town. And, well, uh, many... I uh, haven't seen you in quite some time, but looking back at your career, you achieved so much. Uh, looking back at your career yourself, uh, how would you say you feel having played in various parts of Europe and also uh, played here in South Africa and been part of the uh, international setup for South Africa? Looking back, how do you feel about it all? Hi, Silvia. Thanks for having me on board uh, on your show. I uh, really going to enjoy it. Uh, first of all, yes, of course. You know, it was been it was been. Uh, if you ask myself, I uh, don't regret anything in my football. Yeah, yeah I think I was a, a good hard worker and team player for all the teams that I played for. I enjoyed mo most of my football career. Of course, we had a little bit here and the injuries, but I enjoyed all of it. You know, I was part of the World Cup squad. That was an unbelievable, great. I would say spotlight of my career mm. in country. So that was really good. And then, of course, my young journey, uh, when I went to Germany when 15, then I went to Sweden. Sweden came uh, came back to South Africa, won the was league champions with Supersport with the Gavin Hunt team. Then after the World Cup, I went back to, to Belgium. Came back to Ajax, retired Ajax. So if you ask me, I had I, I enjoyed every, every minute of my football career. That's good to know. Now, you retired in 2015. Uh, some, like myself, would uh, maybe be of the opinion you retired a little bit early, but uh, uh, some will be wondering, what have you been up to since 2015? Well, if you ask me, yes, people always say I retired early. It was just, you know, <laughs> a lot of things came into place. You know, what I would always say... Uh, I'm very old school. I was really old school. I came up with the, like I said, the Mark Byrne, the Gavin Hunt regime. So if you ask me, it was it's different now than if you ask me to earlier. So and that was just that was just not. If you know when your body says no, and just think a lot of things have changed on the field and also off the field. And you know when it, it, you you will know when it's time. Yeah, that was for me the time, and I then I hang up my my boots, and then I was lucky enough to still be in the football world, which I always said I studied uh, sports management. And that's when I moved on also to when I moved back to, to Belgium because my, my wife is from Belgium. Mm -hmm. So I moved there and then I became an agent. I worked with Rob Moore, who was my agent at then throughout my football career. I, I was lucky enough to, jo to join him. And, uh, and there on, uh, I kept on going. I was busy a lot in the American market, European market, as well as the South African market. And four or five years ago, I just uh, I moved on with my my, my agent with, with myself. Then I moved on, and, and I'm working closely or partner to to, to Glenn Binker now. Yeah. So we have we run, we run up our, our football agency called Football First. So I've been in the game now for ten to eleven years. I studied, as I said to you, the sports management. But my biggest dream and goal is still I, I would like to become part of a football club. You know, uh, as in like a you know assistant or sports director you think because I think I can add a lot of value into a football club especially with the new generation that we have to adapt to now and of course like I said with my experiences I had around the world now uh Nice to know that you've been involved in football since uh, uh, you walked away as a player. Uh, many a Chiefs fans uh, would have been hoping that uh, Oswin Apollos would sign for them in uh, the uh, transfer window just uh, uh, just gone by or that we just in. Um, can you give us some background on what transpired there and how he didn't end up at Chiefs? Well, this is where I think I, I did this interview, I think, a week ago. I spoke about it because you know, everybody wanted to know. Also, the policy was in demand uh, from the beginning. You know, everyone was talking about off these Bafana matches. And as I said, was Chiefs was pushing from the beginning. From the word go, I would say, when the, when the window opened, they were interested in the policy. Uh, the, and we just couldn't get, um, <laughs> the, the owner was very, couldn't get hold of him. He just went offline many times, just couldn't get hold of him. Uh, junior, uh, Bob Stake, Bobby was pushing, pushing, pushing. I just think at the end of the day was Paul Aquani's owner wanted the money all up front. He wanted a one mm -hmm. payment. And I didn't think that Kachi had the capacity to pay the amount that he wanted in a, in a one, one off payment. So I th if you ask me if the Chiefs ask, if the Chiefs fans or, or anyone that loves Chiefs, I'm sure the whole country loves Chiefs. But at that moment, I just don't think uh, they should be hard on the on the management because they were trying to push uh, as hard as they could. It's just that, you know, they didn't have the the capacity or actually the financial strength to pay for the Kwanis owner in a one-off payment. 
Now, we're at a point where a few of the South African players have, uh, well, gathered interest from teams uh, playing uh, in North Africa. First, your opinion on some, some South African players moving to North Africa and how that's coming about. What is it that's uh, attracting the uh, South African players to North African teams and also the North African teams to South African players? Well, I think it's good for, for just in Africa in general that our players also want to go play in, in North Africa, you know. Uh, I would say I think they also still would love to go play or they want to play if every players deemed to play in Europe. But now that I think the, the African market, or I would say, and, and don't get me wrong, I think just social media has made it even better for these other markets to get because now they can see, especially in the Champions League, you know, I think the last African Nations Cup, there was a lot of people watching this Afri African Nations Cup worldwide than yeah. I think in the normal, you know. So I think that pushed a lot uh, of, of our as players to go in North Africa. And remember, since in North Africa, they are earning much, much, much more money than in South Africa. Of course, sure. they don't they don't pay in rands, they pay in dollars or in euros. So if you do the exchange rate, that also excites the players. And I'm not saying they always want to go for money, but of course, that changes people's lives. Mm -hmm. And also, if you look at the, the, the they don't pay tax also uh, in, in the North African countries. So if you look at it, uh, I think you see where they ask you, tell you to, if you're going to get your money net every month and don't pay tax, I think you will also take the the chance and go work in, 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 in those type of countries. But don't get me wrong, I said uh, in the North Africans, Egypt, Morocco, it's also good football. Eh? The big clubs are playing there, they're playing Champions League. And if you look now, you know how many people are watching the, the, the draw of the Champions League of mm. the, for both competitions. So I think it's good for for, 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 for for Africa, but it's also good for South Africa because now the South African clubs have to also be careful because they'll be losing their best players to African clubs and not only think of, of Europe because I think the African clubs also have the capacity to pay the type of money that some European clubs will pay. Mm, that's, that's a good point. And also, uh, having looked at the uh, market from a South African and African and a European and worldwide point of view, uh, how, how, how healthy is the market these days with regards to player movements and player movements, I'm talking from all parts of Africa to different parts of the world these days, the exposure for African players, is it good? Yes, I would say, and, I, and like I said uh, uh, in, in my, I always say in my, my last interview, season, if the problem is, you know, I always say our, our, our players are talently very good. You know, I always say I compare them to young South uh, Europeans. We have better flair. I think our yeah. mobility of our players are much more advanced. It's just that sometimes, and, and it's, it's, straight, it's crazy to say that the European clubs will only pay big money when Africans are in Europe already. But for Europeans to come to South, to buy players straight from South Africa, it's difficult to the amount that the clubs want straight. So, so they would won't pay the big amount. So, example, what would have they paid for Mo Salah if he was playing for Egypt? Uh, 60, 70 million from straight from uh, Liverpool or Vive? No, they would not do that. Yeah. They, will, I don't, they will do that. But they will pay for Africans that are in Europe already. They will pay the big amounts because then they, they, that's how, unfortunately, how they think that categorically then, okay, they are playing in Europe. They don't have to adapt anymore like they used to. A lot of, you know, small detail things and then they'll pay the amount. So if you actually compare, so if you compare it, the market is really good in Europe. I always say that is the hub, unfortunately. I always make the example when a good basketball player wants to play uh, basketball, where are they going to go play? They're going to go, they want, everybody wants to go to the NBA. Yeah, you know, they, they're not going to say they're going to go to Europe, and that's what I make. Unfortunately, and it is so Europe is the hub where the, the the football is, so everybody wants to go to Europe, and then they pay the big money, but they're not going to pay the big money, you know, that's going to come unfortunately to Africa, which I say it's crazy because you can get even a cheaper player with a better talent to come, but they just don't unfortunately think like that, and also you know they they also want to watch players live, and unfortunately till now. European can't watch the PSL plays the games live because of some for some reason. So that's also still difficult. Still, people are still trying to get that sorted uh, that they can watch the games. Uh, like so, there's like an app called or, or so sort of thing called Wise Scout that they can watch the so African league. And at, at this moment, the European clubs can't watch the PSL teams. So yeah. that's also a problem. So they can't see anyone play. They can only watch the national team play because that is available, but not the PSL games. So if you ask me, they must come fly all over to watch the games live if they want to see the player. So if I say, uh, oh, um, to a, a European team, do you, you, uh, you know to Bochum or Queen? I say, yeah, but I can't watch him. I can only watch him when he plays national team. 
Wow. So it's also that that's also difficult for our players, you know, to get the market they would like, you know, because that's what that's what every week the so the, the European club is doing. They're watching the, they're watching the African market, but they can't watch South African players live on mm. uh, when they're watching matches. Yeah, it's a good point. And now let's let's go back in time and go back to you at Hellenic. Now, for those of us that are old enough, uh, we'll know Hellenic as a historic club that's uh, given us great players over the years some time ago. Um, you started off uh, in your development at uh, Hellenic, and uh, how do you then move from Hellenic to um, getting uh, scouted abroad and going abroad at a very early age before any South Africans really knew you? So take us through your journey from Hellenic going abroad. Yes, so, wow, well, you know, you're taking me really back, eh? I had, I had <laughs> lots of hair. I, I still had that, lots of hair that time. So, <laughs> you know, so my, yeah, my, my journey started really young, you know, and to be honest, Gavin Hunt was my, the first team coach, which he gave me a fantastic uh, breakthrough, to be honest. Um, when I play, I was 13 when I made him. I just, it was a friendly match when the Zurich team came to, to Cape Town and he gave me just a few minutes in the first team. Um, mm. So that was... And that's when it kicked off. I was really, I had a fantastic late mentor, Mark Byrne. He was a great influence in my in 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 in, in, in my in my football career, also. And that's when it started. And then um, at that time, it was really funny. Now I'm working together. Glenn Binken was my first agent, also yeah. at that time. And when I played the national team, I scored. I think it was under 17. I scored a hat trick. And then I went on trials to Arsenal and to Germany and to England. Unfortunately, that was still the red tape in England. And I think I was still one of those players that could still move to Europe under the age of 18. That yeah. law was not there. there. And with, so I could still move. So I left South Africa when I was 15 already and I played uh, 14 or 15. I moved to Germany to play for 1860 Munich. And at 16 and a half, 17, I made my debut for 1860 Munich against Bayern Munich. Mm. So that I was really fortunate and I really, like I said, uh, if you ask me, I will never change that. It was, Germany was a fantastic uh, country for me to to mature, to grow up as a, as a, as a, as a, as a person, as a human being. Because it was Germany, that was very strict, you know, and if you look now, I can speak German, Swedish. So that was, that, that, that was good experiences for me in, in my football life. Now, when you had played in Europe, from a very young age, and you also came through later on in your career and played in the PSL, so to speak. You, you gave a very good account of yourself in the years uh, playing here in South Africa. What was that transition like, and how did you find the game in South Africa compared to that in Europe? What was actually, it was really funny because at that time, you know, I was at Swe in Sweden, and, and, you know, those leagues are different. So the Swedish leagues run differently to the, to the normal European and actually South African league. The league stops in November in Sweden yeah. and it only starts again in April. So I had, a, I, I had to move on and I had to get a, a club because also I didn't want to stay in Sweden. So because of the leagues, it was different. I need to, needed to get a, cl a club at that time. So it was 2009 and that was the COD 15. And uh, Joel Santana was a coach and he said, Lance, listen, you need to get his club before, otherwise you, it's going to be difficult. And luckily, or I would say, uh, then I said, listen, I have to make a quick, I can make a quick decision, but a good decision. And I was really fortunate that at that time, Gavin Hunt was the coach of Supersport. Mm. Going back to, to, to ah. me where it actually really started. Yeah. So that was a good, that was actually a, a, a good move. And I think it was important for me because I knew the coach really well. And uh, and if you look at that team that played the 2001, there was also a lot of Cape Town players also part of that squad. So that was a good integration for myself, you know. And of course, you know, if you're playing football, it's a, it's a small world, so you can integrate quickly. Yeah. So that was really good for me. So if you ask me the difference, of course, there was I was struggling a lot with, um, I would say, structure, you know, the game very fast in South Africa in the PSL, yeah. very fast, you know. But also, you know, because I was used to really... A, um, to the so European football where you know it's going to take one touch or two touch you know in South Africa you just didn't know what's going to come yeah uh, and it was also difficult because when, you, when you're playing different types of teams it was always you didn't know what sometimes what you're going to come up against you know mm. in South Africa so but if you ask me my trip, it was I enjoyed it I was a champion you know that's always good you know you always know when you win trophies but I had a fantastic time in, 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 in super sport and also I had a fantastic time in, in, in Cape Town, and I went back to Ives Cape Town also. 
All right, Lancer, uh, thank you so much for your time. Also, thank you so much for your contribution to the beautiful South African game and to the game at large. And nice to see that you're still involved in the game, uh, hoping to, to, to see you grow uh, in your years uh, following uh, your, your years as a footballer. Yeah, Thanks so much for your time. Thanks so much, Ibe, and fantastic, and I'll see you soon. See you soon.